Rock and roll will never die, it's been said. But Mick Jones, the lead guitarist of the group Foreigner, did have doubts about his own career a few years back. No more, though. Anthony Mason will talk with Mick Jones for the record. I wanna know what love is. Foreigner is one of rock's most successful bands. But just a few years ago, founder Mick Jones feared his career was over. You must feel like you've got a second life. Yeah. I mean, I honestly never thought I'd play on stage again. The remarkable comeback of Foreigner's Mick Jones, ahead on Sunday morning. Ice helped to make Foreigner one of the hottest bands of the 80s. Anthony Mason talks now with the man behind the band, guitarist Mick Jones, for the record. We first heard from Foreigner in 1977. It kind of came out of nowhere. Yeah. When Mick Jones assembled a band of journeyman musicians, three Brits and three Americans, Foreigner put out their very first record. What, what did you think when that album took off? I mean, it was like being at Cape Canaveral. <laughs> <Really>? <laughs> it was really intense. You're as cold as ice. For the next decade, they rained hits down on radio, selling 80 million records worldwide. But before Foreigner made Mick Jones famous, the British-born guitarist had had a whole other career in France. What made you go to France? There was partly that attraction of, wow, what a cool, hip place. And their sunglasses are really happening. You know? <laughs> As a teenager, he played guitar for French pop star Sylvie Vartan performing on the same bill with the Beatles and Jimi Hendrix. That got him a gig with rock star Johnny Halliday, the French Elvis. Halliday and Jones reunited recently at Le Bill Bouquet restaurant in New York. And so why did you want him? Because uh, in France in that time, you didn't have good guitar players in mm -hmm. And he was one of the best. Jones would play with Halliday through the 60s and also co-wrote some of his biggest hits. Yeah, I wrote uh, something like maybe 40 songs for me. You know? Well, Another I think so. Many. You know, I was more industrious than I thought. <laughs> <laughs> but Jones still wanted to prove himself in England and America. He was asked to join Gary Wright's band, Spooky Tooth. He left me for Gary Wright. He left you for Gary Wright. <laughs> how, did, how did you feel about his leaving? I was upset. No. I must say, I was upset because I liked him as a friend and I and I loved him as a, a guitar player. Go you did do, I think. think. I forgive you now. <laughs> <laughs> C'est la vie, yeah. Huh? Oh, that's a big weight off my shoulders. Now. <laughs> yeah. Jones would play in several bands in the '70s, but nothing seemed to catch. Right. Until one night, he wrote the first chords. <laughs> of Feels Like the First Time. And suddenly I'm thinking, my God, this song's pretty good, too. You know, it's... So did you have the song before you had the band? Yeah. Huh. Yeah. So now you needed the band. I needed the band. <laughs> That's how Foreigner was born. It's you and me. But as it took off, Jones and lead singer Lou Graham began to fight over the group's direction. Did it get too competitive? No, Lou considered himself to be just more of a down and out rock singer. Mm -hmm. Jones says Graham thought the band's sound was getting too soft. Especially when we got to uh, I Wanna Know What Love Is. Although he sang it like an angel, he, um, he sort of disclaimed his affection for, for, for the song. Did that bother you? Yeah. Gotta take a little time. 
they would split in 2003. Time to think things over. You know, I look back at it now, I can't have been easy to work with in those days. I knew what I wanted, I was pretty domineering. You sound like you have some regrets. Yes, I do. I mean, we met last year again for the um, Songwriters Hall of Fame. So tonight, it is my great honor to welcome Mick Jones and Lou Graham into the Songwriters Hall of Fame. At the induction ceremony last year, Jones and Graham performed together for the first time in a decade. You know, we hugged and, you know, I think it both dawned on us that, wow, we did do something pretty good together. That meant something to you. Oh, big time, yeah. For the past decade, the guitarist has been leading a new foreigner. They just released a live album. When it comes to love, I should know better. But a few years ago, Jones was forced to take a year off at the time, he blamed it on a heart valve problem, but now admits it was more than that. I'd, I'd had a virtual nervous breakdown mm -hmm. brought on by a, a bad prescribing of um, medication. Jones talked about it for the first time. And it was, it was a very dark time for me. I, d I literally didn't know where I was anymore. How do you mean? I didn't know who I was. I mean, I honestly never thought I'd play on stage again. Really? Yeah. I lost the ability to play chords briefly, only for a couple of months. Wow. And my brother brought a guitar over for me. Yeah. And said, you, you play, play guitar, play it. You're a guitarist, play the guitar, you know. That must have been terrifying. Yeah, it was terrifying. How do you come back from that? <laughs> you just somehow try and hold on. With the help of his family, his four children, and three stepchildren, Please welcome Mr. Mick Jones! He did. And Mick Jones, who turned 70 just yesterday, is on the road again. The jukebox hero is back. It must feel pretty good to go out on stage now, then. Yeah, it does. Sometimes I, I think, you know, wow, what a gift to have regained.